There's a trail tucked high in the California Sierras that traverses the incredible granite landscape and is littered with beautiful crystal clear waters. Each year, thousands of off-road enthusiasts travel from all over the country and the world to conquer this famous trail, which has been done for generations before them. This is perhaps the most iconic and history-filled off-road trail in the country, so iconic that Jeep named their flagship model after it. This trail is not for the faint of heart though, it's for the prepared and the ones willing to push their vehicles and themselves to the absolute limits, the breaking point. This week, we're on the Rubicon Trail. Welcome back everybody. Today we are on one of the most iconic trails in the country and a trail that we've been waiting an extremely long time to come and conquer ourselves. We are on the Rubicon Trail. So from our doorstep right to this point, the odometer reads 999 miles, which is pretty crazy. It's not, literally a thousand miles <laughs> to the trailhead of the Rubicon from our house in Western Colorado. So right now we're at Wentworth Springs Campground, which is mile marker zero for the Rubicon Trail. Now this part of the trail is actually bypassed by most people who run the Rubicon. Usually they're going in through the Loon Lake side and that's where they start. But we wanted to come check it out, you know? We wanted to come get the full experience. So now we're here and we're witnessing it for ourselves. Yeah, but ultimately, although this is a really great place to stay, we decided to actually make our way back down to Loon Lake because we stayed there two years ago and really enjoyed yeah, it. It's an amazing place, incredibly beautiful. So we're gonna try to make our way down there tonight. You know, maybe we'll end up only getting halfway or something, staying on the Rubicon before it gets dark, but that's that's the plan for tonight. Tomorrow we're supposed to stay at Loon Lake as well. So it looks like Wentworth Springs really has the potential to be a great campground. Yeah. It needs some TLC though. I think the rain that came through recently through California, it this campground could just not take it. It just needs yeah. it needs to have some wood moved around and some benches to be probably replaced, replaced honestly. Yeah. yeah. But other than that, it's a really nice place. It's really nice. It's a really nice area. They got a nice little spring over here. They got a brand new bathroom. It literally looks like it was built last week. It's really nice, but we're going to try, like I said, to make our way to Loon Lake. We're going to jump on the trail right now. When we were making our way into Wentworth Springs, we met a ranger going the opposite way who was coming back from checking in on the campground. And they asked if we had the time, they would greatly appreciate if we could put up the new information board at the center of camp once we got there. Of course, this was no problem. We got it bolted up and tight and even left some backcountry beagle stickers for someone to find. They also asked us to move this decent sized rock that made its way from in front of the sign to the middle of the road. Once again, this was no problem at all. Once we got this all done, we were soon aired down and we are on our way. Very quickly, the trail was thrown obstacles at us. We made our way up slick granite, climbed across rock garden after rock garden, weaved through tight turns, and then came to the realization that we may have underestimated the time it was gonna take to get to Loon Lake today.
we came in this little predicament. We probably could get up this if we came a little more passenger a little ways. We could probably back up a few times, come up that way. But you now we're trying to make it to Loon Lake before dark. You can see it right over there. The sun's already past the mountains. So we're just going to wench up it. No, we're not going to play these games. <laughs> so this is why we're not going to keep trying. You join cap. I mean, someone else has broken here trying to get back up without using their wench. So we just came to the Rubicon Trail intertie. You can see right here, Rubicon Trail, 1.5 mile marker. This is further down the Rubicon Trail, right there where Jake's going, is towards Loon Lake. That's like the start of the trail basically. And this is where we came from. So we're gonna make our way down towards Loon Lake. Last night was definitely challenging coming from Wentworth. Last night was extremely challenging. I think it was a good time. You know, we kind of underestimated the time. It, I was thinking two to three hours from Wentworth, but it took upwards of four, four and a half. Once we were in it, we had to keep going. That's just how it is. Like we made that decision. We had to get to the end and we did it. We wanted to keep on going. I think it was still a good idea. So it got dark quick. And it was, it was nice running the trail at night. It was, it was pretty cool. Once we got to the end, it, we all felt a lot better. It became a lot less stressful. We got to where we wanted to be. That was really fun because we got to experience some nighttime wheeling on the Rubicon. We're gonna use today to just regroup, maybe play in the water for a little bit, let the dogs just hang out and take a break. I didn't expect this trail and this trip not to be challenging. If that's the most challenging that it's gonna get, then I'm okay with that. I know that's probably not what's gonna happen, but we'll see. Tomorrow, we're gonna to be jumping back on the Rubicon, making our way to Buck Island. So it's pretty crazy. Two years ago to this week, Ashley and I were here at North Shore Campground. Now we didn't do the Rubicon at that point. We just wanted to, to check out Loon Lake because we saw pictures of it. It was so picturesque and beautiful. We went up to the first granite slabs and I just thought, wow, I need to get back here. I need to be able to run the Rubicon. One thing that brought me to this trail is simple and it's Ron. I don't particularly like all of these very, very extremely tough trails but this is one of Ron's dreams and I would never say no to him. I would come and do this trail a million times with him if he asked me to. I'm doing this for him. <laughs> if I just did it once, I'd be okay with that. But Ron is already talking about plans to come back, so. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. It feels surreal to be here right now. It's a lot of time, money, planning, just to go on this trail. One thing I definitely cannot wait for is pulling up to the green Rubicon Springs Bridge and just finally taking a picture. You know, I've seen so many pictures of people with their Jeeps and their rigs on the Rubicon Springs Bridge, and I just, I can't wait to get my own, that's all. Honestly, I'm a bit anxious. I, I don't want anything to go wrong. I mean, we're a thousand miles away from home, so it's a little bit nerve wracking, especially when we drove our Jeep all the way here. I'm not really worried about anything. We have enough parts to build a whole new Jeep. We're over prepared, which is a good thing. I am constantly worried that somebody's gonna get hurt, the Jeeps are gonna get broken, we're gonna get stranded out there. 
Goodbye. I'm excited to finally get on the trail today. I know today is gonna be definitely a long one. I think the rest of the trail, the Rubicon Trail is going to be horrendous. I think that the rest of the trail will be challenging and fun. I'm not necessarily looking forward to it. I'm very nervous. I'm looking forward to see the, uh, our vehicle's capabilities. The goal is to get to Buck Island, so I hope <laughs> there's no change of plans in there. We gotta put down some miles, definitely. Some unforeseen issues would be uh, not too great, but we're gonna make the best of it either way. So from what I know, this is the start of the gatekeeper. So for the next couple hundred feet or so, there's just these massive, massive boulders. Now we came through here when we came through Wentworth Springs, but now we gotta try to go the opposite way. The gatekeeper is basically a big rock garden, lots of big boulders and multiple lines to run. I've heard that over the years though, it has gotten slightly easier. The local Jeep clubs that maintain the Rubicon have even dynamited some larger rocks in this section for the purpose of sediment control, which results in making it a little easier for milder rigs like ours. Out of the entire Rubicon Trail, I would definitely say the gatekeeper is one of the easier sections we experience. We didn't need to pull wench on this section, our Jeeps did just fine. We just had to choose the right line. One thing I put into consideration when choosing a line is body damage. As you can see, we don't have rock sliders on the Cherokee, so if possible, I'd like to not come down on the rockers or the doors, but if it happens, it happens. We also do not have a gas tank skid plate, so making sure I'm not going to come down on a huge rock in the gas tank area is something that's always going through my mind. So this is a good example of not the best line. I got caught up on the diff and even with both lockers engaged, I wasn't going anywhere. But in this case, I just had to back up and go slightly drivers to lift that diff over the big rock and we were on our way. Jake's TJ does absolutely amazing on this trail. It's a combination of a well-built rig and a driver who actually knows what they're doing. It has a large footprint. We stretched it about four inches in the rear, which puts it at 100 inches of wheelbase. It's basically at the wheelbase of a Cherokee. And with how wide it is and how much flex it has, which is 10 inches up front and 12 in the rear, it makes for a great combination for this kind of stuff. Now Jake only has a front locker in the TJ, no rear, but I've said it in the past, if you're only going to get one locker at first, go with the front, it'll pull you up just about anything you throw at it.
Keeper and a few more obstacles. And before we knew it, we were at the Granite Bowl. I hate going down so I love going up so So we came down this because we came the other way uh, two nights ago and this was extremely sketchy coming down because you kind of got to come down it right here for our Jeep at least being tall and skinny and then make a hard, hard passenger. Jake's gonna, I mean, we came back up it, no problem. Jake's gonna try coming up now. I'm sure his Jeep will walk it. So we're probably about a mile in or so. We're getting very, very close to the Wentworth Springs intertie. So we're just stopping to have some lunch. You know, we've been wheeling for about two hours and we've only gone about a mile. We still got about five miles before we get to Buck Island. So we're gonna be packing up here soon and heading down the trail. We just came up with this obstacle and we came upon this and this is just well exactly what we don't want to happen don't know what's going on here the people have seemed to have left but we're gonna continue down the trail <laughs>
So we're currently 2.78 miles into our trail for today. We're only going six miles in and we have about three more to go to get to Buck Island. And now we have to go up Lower Walker Hill next. And I have not been in the Jeep once this entire Rubicon Trail excursion so far. I have been walking and filming the entire time and I'd like to see if maybe I can just keep that going until mile 20. It'll be a nice long exercise. Feeling good so far. Snacks are keeping me going. No. Walker Hill was a lot of fun. It consists of, once again, many, many large granite boulders that you just kind of have to find the right line for. Both Jeeps did just fine through here, and we even noted a good campsite at Lower Walker Hill for a future trip. At this point in the day, it was a little past noon, and this campsite would have been the perfect place to stop and relax. If only we knew what complications lied ahead. So we just finished climbing Walker Hill and you can actually see Loon Lake where we started way down there except we started somewhere over there on Loon Lake. We came upon the cell phone tree where you actually have pretty, pretty good service like 5G. Hello? <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty good service. We were able to post a YouTube short and whatnot. We got some more miles to put down and the next major obstacle is Soup Bowl. So hopefully there's some big Jeeps down there that we can watch go through. You should have seen her yesterday. She loves laying in like the weirdest spots. Edward's taking some hits today. Oops! <laughs> so we made it to the soup bowl. This is probably considered one of the toughest obstacles on the Rubicon Trail. And just by looking at this, this looks insane. Like way crazier than the videos I've watched online or the pictures I've seen. We're obviously, we're not trying this. This is, this is some intense stuff. I want to conquer this one day, but this week is not going to be the week. That's pretty cool. I wish, I was really hoping there was going to be some people here so we could see them trying to go up it, maybe breaking some stuff, but next time, I guess. That's crazy. Choose the bypass and say we did it. The nice thing about the Rubicon is there are plenty of bathrooms along the way, which make for a clean trail, and that's by design. There's been many issues in the past, I'll let your mind run wild with that, that has led up to the bathrooms on the trail. We came across another extremely well-known popular obstacle, this one being Little Sluice. We had to bypass it due to the sheer size of the boulders. I can just imagine the rigs going through here getting absolutely destroyed.
The water crossing and the small v-knots were fun, unexpected obstacles, but the real fun came just around the corner. So we're here in the middle of the trail and I'm cracking a cold one. And you know, that's not a good sign. <laughs> It's a good sign to have the beer, because I've been waiting. But we've got a broken XJ right here. Not good. We're right past V-notch. We just went through V-notch. We came down through these obstacles here, and I heard a giant, giant smashing noise. And I got out, I was like, wow, we just broke a U joint, but that's not too bad, because we got a few of them with us, a few axle shafts in the front. I got out, I couldn't see anything. I was like, maybe the locker just blew up inside that Dana 30. <laughs> Um, but then we kept going and Ash says, hey, that tire is sh like shoved against that rear quarter on the right side. And sure enough, we snapped the main leaf for the uh, an upper leaf right over here. So that's really too bad. So what we're gonna try to do right now is pull that tire off. We're gonna put a bolt through where there should be a bolt and it should catch the broken part of the leaf spring. Then we're gonna try to ratchet strap it together a bunch of times. And hopefully that'll hold together until we, I mean, I don't finish the trail really. We're gonna try to work through this the best we can because this is what the Rubicon Trail is all about. All right, let's take off that tire. Uh -huh. Makes for good content. <laughs> right, Ryan? <Red>? Yeah. <laughs> So this is what we got for a fix. A lot of ratchet straps. So let's see how that holds up. We got two ratchet straps holding the leaf spring together. You can kind of see where it's broken right there. Let's see how far we get before we get to redo that. Yep, and you'll clear. You might get a little bit of dip, but you're fine. You want to come over here. We go across. You want to come over here. The Cherokee snapped the leaf spring around 5 p.m. So we were already running late at that point. We should have been at Buck Island hours ago. It took about an hour to get repaired. And for the next four and a half hours, the camera was put down and we limped the Cherokee through some of the toughest obstacles we had done on the trail yet. Around 11 p.m., without a flat campsite in sight, we found ourselves on a granite mountainside that was much too dangerous to pass in the dark. We were tired, hungry, and still about a mile away from Buck Island, so we called it a night. The most challenging part was just the amount of time it took for everything. Obviously we didn't get to Buck Island last night. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the past three days Ron has crossed out the number one question which is what is your favorite part of the day? I just find that really funny. The whole situation with the Lee Spring is definitely very unfortunate. We tried to make it to Buck Island but then we obviously broke the Leaf Spring and we didn't make it there and it just made it like a grueling 12 hour day. I think we handled that situation all right, not the best. And everybody was tired, everybody was stressed, everybody was tense. We handled the fixing the broken part good. The actual broken Jeep part itself we handled really well. As soon as the Jeep leaf spring broke, we kind of immediately jumped into action. But it also got to a point where off camera, Jake's Jeep started having an issue where it started overheating. Jake was trying to deal with that issue. We had to wait a very long time for it to cool down. We had to put more coolant in it. So Jake was angry about that. I was angry about the leaf spring situation. Ash was trying to wrangle all the pups on it. And we're all on the side of this cliff right here, on the side of a mountain. And then we stopped in a really bad spot. We ended up sleeping in the Jeeps on the side of the trail, which wasn't very comfortable. At this point, we were kind of all just mentally drained. We decided it wasn't the best decision to be doing it at night. I feel like we could have kept going. It's a very stressful situation. I mean, with a group of just two Jeeps and three people and three dogs, it's it's a lot to handle sometimes. It's it's not easy, and I think that we did the best we could, but, you know, tensions get high, emotions get high, and 
it, you know, people don't always get along, but the next day you wake up and you regroup and you, you know, you're fine and you, you move forward and you move on, which is what we've done. Okay, bye. We wheeled our way past Buck Island Lake and dozens of incredible campsites along its shores. This place really is special. There's a reason why it's the center of attention on the Rubicon, right next to obviously Rubicon Springs. Unfortunately, we'll have to save camping here for another time because today it was all about covering ground. The original plan was to go from Buck Island to Rubicon Springs and camp at Rubicon Springs. But now after covering all the extra ground up until Buck Island, we still have to get to Rubicon Springs. We all talked about it and came to the agreement that we were gonna pass the springs and just cover as much ground as possible today, possibly find a campsite closer to the end of the trail. The Green Cherokee's leaf spring fix was still doing great at this point. We checked on the rat straps every once in a while to make sure that they were all still tight and just took it slow through most of the obstacles. You're good. What we wanted to do. Go driver. Yep. You're good. Go a little bit passenger. Yep, a little bit passenger. Yeah, your passenger's coming down now. But your driver's coming down too. Oh, I love that thing. We continued wheeling okay, some extremely yeah. tough obstacles the next few hours, and finally through the trees, we noticed the Rubicon Springs Bridge. So we made our way through Rubicon Springs and the trail is not getting any easier. It's still just as tough as before. And we made our way to Cadillac Hill. It's got that name because of a Cadillac just off the trail, an old Cadillac frame that wound up on the side of the mountain somehow. But before we go any further, we still got, we, we're up quite a bit of it, but before we go any further, we're gonna fix this axle. It, the leaf spring kind of came out of place where we had it before, where we fixed it. It did good up until now, but before we go any further, we're gonna try to repair that just, just for peace of mind. And so the Jeep doesn't come apart halfway up the hill and we can't get out of the trail. So we got the leaf string back to basically where it needs to be. And we got some duct tape doing, doing its job right there. We got duct tape in two different spots. It's basically doing what the ratchet strap was doing before. I think this is gonna work pretty well, not very well, but we're still gonna position two ratchet straps on each side of the axle just so it, you know, it doesn't move side to side or forward to back, I should say. But this should do the trip and get us up Cadillac Hill and hopefully home. Okay.
so this is where Cadillac Hill gets its name. As you can see, there is an old Cadillac frame up on the top of this mountain. It is unclear how it got here, considering it is very tough to get to this spot. So we made it up Cadillac Hill and the Jeep did just fine. So I haven't looked under there, but it's not making any weird noises. So I'm assuming the duct tape is holding well. And we made it to this location called Observation Point. Free dog. Really? Free dog. You got it. Now, now you play. Annie, come on. Good girls. Oh, they all went to their own. That's weird. Did they? Tonight I am making mac and cheese with hot dogs because it is quick, easy, and simple. We are using this setup because we didn't bring the table that we usually have because I wanted to... <laughs> yes, Lily? Do you have something to say? Go down! What Lily was trying to say is that we didn't bring the table that we usually have because we didn't want to take up the space or the weight. And this actually is the most level I've ever been able to get this. So, I'm throwing that table away. I hate that table anyway. So since the last time we filmed this tent, we've made a few changes. We bought two self-inflating sleeping pads, which has made a world of a difference. They take up so much less room and they're actually really comfortable. They're super comfortable. I, was, I wasn't really sure how I was gonna like it, but they are totally worth it. Mine's a two inch one, yours is a inch and a half, and they're both pretty nice. They, like you're, you can't even touch the ground when you're sleeping on them and that's yeah. crazy it's only two inches and before we had the air mattress and it took up a bunch of room and our heads would almost be touching these when we sat up yeah that just yeah if we we're on the air mattress right now yeah, it's like it's a foot tall <laughs> much roomier in here yeah definitely so i'll give you a little bit of a room tour yeah it's about five by five yeah. <laughs> it's very small tiny, tiny. so we've used it the past oh gosh i don't even know how many nights now 
Probably only three nights on oh. this trip. Well, we've slept like a lot. We've slept in the Jeep twice. We've slept in this three times now. So, mm -hmm. so in this corner is where we keep our bags, or at least the past few times we've had Ron's electronic bag and then yep. my clothes and everything else bag, and then we have a few blankets lined up along the side that are hopefully where the pups sleep. <laughs> it's meant for where the pups are going to sleep. It rarely happens. Yeah. At least it hasn't happened so far. Right now we just have some electronics doing their stuff there. Yep. Charging. <laughs> <laughs> their thing. <laughs> yeah. And then over here we have our sleeping bags yeah. and our sleeping pads. And then we have a pup here sleeping. They have been pooped this entire trip. Every night they are just so tired. Yeah. So we got that one, that one, and where's Belly you ask? Oh, oh Lily, I'm sorry. You're just <laughs> natty sleep. And where's Belly, Ron? Some beats. Oh, there she is. Bella, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, there's our weird little tour of our 5x5 five five sleeping arrangement <laughs> for the past couple of nights. With that being said, we'll see y'all in the morning. Nobody wants to see a bug crack. Good morning everybody. It's been a very slow going morning. We finally just got to pack the Jeep up, you know, remove everything, repack it, and it makes it feel a lot better. We made some great coffee. That uh, little coffee maker we got is like yeah. definitely the way to go. It makes it great coffee. Yeah, and every time I go to Maverick, I grab a few creamers, those little tiny cups, so that I can use them on the road. So we're camped here right by Observation Point. It's like the first campsite right after Observation Point going towards Tahoma. And this is a nice little campsite. You know, it's just what yeah. we needed for last night, I think. Yeah, it was beautiful. And it's nice and shady in the morning too, so it's not too hot. Yeah, definitely. The self-inflated air pads definitely, definitely do the trick. You oh, know, yeah. They work absolutely amazing. You know, I think we got a pretty good night's rest compared to some of the other nights sleeping in the Jeep. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. So past observation point, there doesn't seem to be any named obstacles until the trailhead, which we've realized does not mean anything. And there could be some crazy stuff up ahead, but we're going to start making our way down, see how long it takes us to get there and just keep going. Yeah, let's hit the trail. There's not much to know at this point on the trail. It was much easier than what lied before Cadillac Hill, but that doesn't mean we didn't break anything. Jake's driver's side axle shaft U-joint grenaded on his Dana 30, not even going up anything tough. It had been clicking and making noise since Wentworth Springs, and we even considered replacing it with our spare shaft back at Loon Lake. We had this repaired pretty quickly, 30 minutes or so. When you put a 35 inch or bigger tire on a Dana 30, you'll get pretty good at replacing axle shafts. From here, it was a quick journey to the Rubicon Trailhead in Tahoma. Pavement. There's pavement, it exists. <laughs> How you doing? You like what you see? <laughs> we were filming our daily confessions that Ron has us do, and he made us climb up this little hill. And on my way back down from the hill, I rolled my ankle really bad. Now it's like the size of a golf ball, and it hurts. Foot fix? I'm wearing my shoe on. This trip to the Rubicon has been planned for the past 11 months, and it honestly doesn't feel real that it's actually over. Big trips like these are the ones we not only plan for the most, but also look forward to the most. And even despite all the research and prep work, not everything always goes as planned. Rigs break, you have late nights on the trail or subpar camp spots. However, we have learned over time that going with the flow and just getting through each day safely and in high spirit is more important than following a plan. What truly matters is that you have a good group of people and most importantly, a good attitude and there's no way you won't have a great time. With this mindset, you'll leave the trail with memories and stories to share for the rest of your life. Ever since I got my first 4x4 eight years ago, I've had what I call an off-roading bucket list that I'm slowly checking off trails and obstacles from. 
And this trail, the Rubicon Trail, was at the very top of that list. Its iconic name, vast history, and amazing community are what give this mentally and physically challenging trail its well-deserved reputation and make it a trail that thousands of off-road enthusiasts aim to conquer. However, it always seems that when one of these bucket list items get checked off, another one is added. Unfortunately, we can't go on big trips like this every week. We'd love to, but for now, we'll keep on exploring some of our favorite states and start planning for our next big trip. And of course, keep checking off those never ending bucket list places. As always, we appreciate y'all for watching. If you made it this far and you enjoyed our adventure, consider subscribing. Our goal is to hit 2,000 subscribers by January 1st, 2024. We'll see you out on the trail and we'll see you next time.